this video, we're going to go back to doing some graphing. But this time we're going to be doing graphing of radical functions. So to begin with, I just want to make a table, because that's always the best way to graph something you don't know how to graph. So let's choose some x and uh, values to substitute in. Um, if we substitute negative values in for x, we're going to get non-real values. And we can't graph non-real values. So I'm going to say that negative values shouldn't be in our domain. We shouldn't be substituting them in for x. So I'm going to start with 0. That would be our smallest. So the square root of 0 is 0. Square root of 1 would be 1. Uh, 2 is the square root of 2. And I'm just going to put a little approximation here. We should know that that's 1.4. 3 would get you the square root of 3, which again, you should know this approximation is 1.7. And then we get to the square root of 4, but since 4 is a perfect square, we know that that's exactly 2. I'm just going to finish the rest of my table with some more perfect squares here. So 9, the square root, would be... 3, the next one would be 16 to get us 4, and so on. So I'm going to graph these values. So we have a point at 0, 0, 1, 1, uh, 4, 2, and 9, 3. Right, and you could put the, uh, the root 2 and root 3 on here as an approximation. But you'll notice that this is the first graph that we've made that when we connect these values we are only going to put an arrow in one direction and that, like I said that's because the domain of the square root of x function is only from 0 to infinity and notice I included the 0 there which then gives us a range of the same thing, 0 to infinity. So now that we know the basic shape of a square root graph, let's play around. Let's do um, an equation where it is shifted in multiple directions. So in this example, you can see that we have a square root. And now inside the square root, we have an x minus 2. So I hope we remember that this minus 2 means that the graph was moved right two spaces and that this plus 1 is moving the graph up one space. So let's take our original table. I'm just going to write, rewrite that because I don't have it in front of me, but you should have it on your piece of paper, which was 0, 0, 1, 1. I'm going to skip the, uh, the square root approximations. Let's go right to... 4, 2, and 9, 3. So I'm going to take each of those four points and I'm going to move them right 2 and up 1. So here we go. I'm starting at 0, 0. Let's move this right 2, 1, 2, and up 1. That point is 2, 1. So that's our new starting point. Let's do it with the next one. Here we go, we're at 1, 1. Let's move right 2, 1, 2, up 1. Now we're at 3, comma 2. Two more to go. Next one starts at 4, 2. Let's move right 2, 1, 2, and up 1. Now we're at 6, 3. And the last is at 9, 3. Notice that when I move right 2, I go a little bit off here. That's okay. We'll, we'll fake it. And up 1, so we're at 11, 4. And there is our new graph. And the domain of this would be 2 to infinity. Notice that is the farthest to the left this graph goes. Infinity is the farthest to the right this graph goes range, the lowest it goes is 1, and the highest it goes is infinity. So we have our domain and range. And now for a new example. So here's our function. 
And notice that this has three translations. Our first translation, I always like to start with this here, our inside, the square root, which is moving the graph left one. Then I like to do any type of stretching. So this is a vertical stretch. Uh, factor of two. Right, which just pulls this graph in a vertical direction. Or in other words, takes those y values and multiplies them by two. And then the minus four right here, we should know that that's going to move the graph down four. So I'm going to take the graph that I just made and I'm going to shift it. Left one. Okay, so let's start with the point zero, zero. Okay, so we were here at zero, zero. Let's move it left one. Now we're at negative one, zero. If we multiply that value, that y value, by two, we're not going to change anything because our y value at this point right here is zero. Okay, and then down four. So we should be at negative one, negative four. Okay, the next point was at 1, 1, right here. So we're just going to repeat those steps again. Move left 1. Notice I'm at the point 0, 1. Let's take our y value, multiply it by 2. We get 2. One more shift is our 4 down. 1, 2, 3, 4. So it looks like I'm at 0, negative 2. Next step. Let's take the point we had at 4, 2, left 1. Let's stretch this by a factor of 2. So our y value is 2. Getting multiplied by 2 brings us to 4. And down 4 brings us to 3, comma 0. So I think that's enough for us to draw our graph right here. And notice that the order I did my translations was the left, or in this case, you know, we, we did left, but we could have done right. That was our first translation. The second was the vertical stretch. And the third was the up-down. And that's just because of the order of operations, right? If we were to substitute a value in for x, that's the exact order in which we'd have, we would have done this. We would have added 1, we then would have taken the square root, then multiplied by 2, then subtracted the 4. Right? So we could answer questions about domain and range, increasing, decreasing, the x-intercepts, the zeros, the y-intercepts, um, all that stuff we could do.